we've made it through the motivation component of this unit. Where we're gonna go now in this unit is talk a lot more about our emotions. And theories of emotions have really changed over time, but they've been a bit similar at the same time. One of our earliest theories of motivation comes from William James and Carl Lang. And this is the theory that our body being aroused, if you think back to our theory of arousal, our heartbeat, our breathing rate, that this level of arousal can influence our physiological status. And this physiological status can influence our emotions. The idea was if you saw a snake and your heart would go really fast, the heart going really fast would be interpreted by us and make us feel fear. Ah, this theory was not perfect, and that's why by the work of Lazarus, we started to also impute our cognitions, our thoughts about what was happening. So Lazarus said, you know, it wasn't just seeing the snake that all of a sudden makes our heart go fast. We have to appraise the situation and our cognitive appraisal saying, whoa, that snake is venomous, that snake is dangerous. Uh, that cognitive appraisal is what sends us into our physiological state of our heart racing and our blood pressure increasing. And then that in turn can cause the emotion. Then this was further addressed by the work of Scatcher and Singer talking about a two-factor theory. And this is a basic diagram of the two-factor theory, but I like the two-factor theory. It's the idea that it's not that it goes first to your physiological system, and it's not that it goes first to your cognitive appraisal system. It's the idea that when you see the snake, the input from the snake actually goes to two areas of your brain. It goes to the cerebral level of your brain that lets us make cognitive appraisals, and it also goes to the subcortical area of our brain that is our more animalistic, uh, physiological part of our brain, and that is what makes our heart race. And so the appraisal says, oh, this is dangerous, and our heart is racing, which makes us feel whatever emotion, whether it be fear. And so this is important. I like the Schecher Singer model the best because with the James Lang theory, it's arguing that each specific emotion has a different physiological underpinning. Versus with the Schecher Singer model, it's allowing us to say it's both the physiological response and the cognitive appraisal that determines the emotion. So sometimes your heart might be going fast, but it might be because you're sexually aroused, or you're angry, or you're fearful, or you're really excited about a birthday party. So your heart going fast might lead to different emotions depending on your cognitive appraisal of the situation. Now that being said, how many emotions are there? There could be hundreds. When we actually look at dictionaries for different words we use to describe our feelings, we find over 200 different emotions in the English lexicon. Are the two different emotions? Well, researchers have been back and forth on this, and there's lots of different theories of emotions, but one that I like to propose is Paul Ekman's theory of seven main primary emotions. And the seven main primary emotions really focus on things that have distinct facial expressions, and these facial expressions occur even in infants. They also occur in individuals who were born blind, and these facial expressions also occur in many different cultures around the world. So these seven different emotions are all tied to different facial expressions. They're all tied to somewhat different physiological responses, and they're also tied to different motivations. This allows us to really tie up the emotion and motivation part of the course. So we're gonna go through each one of these, what I call seven basic or seven primary emotions and talk about the facial expressions, the physiological underpinnings and the motivations tied to each of these seven motivations. 